Okay, so I know uh, Baller already did his his up and down or his uh, stock up, stock down. But I thought it'd be interesting if we look at this tweet. I thought this tweet was pretty interesting. I'll see if I can zoom mm-hmm. in a little bit. But looking at these guys, the what this person, uh, 49ers Kyle, put out, um, he kind of puts his stock up, stock down. And I just want to see if you guys want to go through it and see if you guys agree. Yeah. Okay, go shoot him to us. I mean, it looks yeah, like first uh, Trey first Lance. Trey Lance, down. yeah. Yeah, Trey Lance stock down. I, stock I personally down. have to. Yeah, I agree. I I don't think he played great. I think he. It's not down dramatically, but it's down, yeah. right? It's I'm, down I'm a little. Saying, bit. I'm saying stock even. I'm saying stock even. I don't. Okay, that's fair. But I mean, to me, he it just he down, looked a little but, nervous. Oh, he looked a little nervous. I, I just I don't know who was open on those plays though, Larry. I like I said, I rewound it in a couple times on the plays where I thought he did hesitate. I didn't see anyone obviously open again the all 22 we'll watch it and, and get back but well i could see down but personally you know i got my lance shirt on i'm going neutral okay sam darnold stock up i would say yes yeah. yes yeah i i he impressed me today honestly i was expecting him to play worse not saying that he impressed me because he was so amazing but i was expecting him to be significantly worse than i imagined just because of all the reports i read and heard this this uh, off season, it seemed like he was pretty. He was accurate. I mean, that ball he threw to Ronnie Bell was, I thought, was beautiful. I wrote down in my notes, oh, beautiful perfect. pass because it was just yeah. right on the money. It and was. he had a, and he had a couple other great throws. I think he only had two throws that I thought were inaccurate, even though he was through five of eight. So I thought it's stock up for sure. Ty Davis Price. It says stock up. I would say stock even. Now, granted, I've my I'm I'm looking at him in practice, and I wanted to see the Ty Davis Price that I've seen all summer in practice. If you're just judging it off of what you last saw from Ty Davis Price, if you're a 49er fan that hasn't been to practice, you would probably say stock up. Oh yeah, he looked better than last year. Yeah, he does look better than last year, but he doesn't. He didn't look as good in this game as he's looked in practice. So I would say stock flat, but if it's based on last year, yeah, stock's up. I'm okay with stock up a little bit. I thought he they had a couple of nice runs. Again, the offensive line, they didn't do any favors. I, I didn't think they run blocked well today, but I, I get stock up on price. Uh, I'd give him stock even. I I thought he was going to be more explosive. Maybe that was the offensive line. I'm gonna have to rewatch it, but he didn't. He didn't have any plays today where I was like, "Wow, look at that guy go!" But he was decent. Ronnie Bell stock up. Yeah, I mean, he did tip a ball that became a pick, right? Yeah, it went yeah, right. It was a nice hands. route, though. It was a nice route. Yeah, but it hit him in the hands. Hit him in the hands. It hit yeah. him in the hands and became an interception. Yeah. So that's a negative. No, but no, I no, do like the fact it, yeah. that Ronnie Bell, uh, you know. I mean, this guy was a seventh round wide receiver. Although the um, return game, I wanted a little more juice in the return yeah. game. D- yep, I was going to say that. Um, D. Jameson's on the list here, but uh, the the return game I thought was kind of eh from uh, from Bell. Yeah, Cameron yeah, Latu. Nothing... Oh, go ahead, Kev. I was going to say there was nothing in the return game that I was like, oh, this guy's a great returner. Maybe he's a better punt returner, but he didn't really get that many yards on the kickoffs. Uh, but he, he was open a lot today. So that definitely means something. I, I didn't see him run all the routes, but he was getting open, getting the ball. So that means something. Who's next on the list there. It's, it's law two law two law two stock has fallen through the floorboards. <laughs> I mean, you know, let's be honest. I mean, this guy, this guy, you know, he had a terrible week of practice where he dropped multiple balls. Um, and then he gets into the game inside his own 20 yard line and he almost drops a pass to him and then fumbles it on the way to the ground. I mean, he just looks, he looks like he's just either his head's in a different place or uh, he's got just terrible hands. And we just don't realize it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. He's, he's got good ability. He's got good prototypical size and speed and athleticism, but you know what? It's it's a tight end position. If he were a four two burner, if it was Danny Gray, and he just didn't quite have uh, great hands, you'd be like, all right, well, it's the guy's a vertical threat. Uh, he's going to run off the coverage and this and that. For a tight end, you have to have sticky hands. You have to catch the ball. So his stock is way down. 
way down. Yeah. Braden yeah, I mean, Willis. What, what, what? I mean, where would you? I mean, was there? Any, I mean, is there any? I mean, did, what do you guys think about Latu? Yeah, Latu's definitely stocked down. The drop sees, you know, and he almost dropped the ball that Sam hit him, and then we know he ended up getting it punched out. So Latu's definitely stocked down. But Willis, I mean, I'm not going to argue against stock up because I am a Braden Willis guy. I love the tape I watched coming out of Oklahoma. He's tough after the catch. And then in the run game, I know he's not the biggest guy, but I thought he was physical AF in the run game. So Braden Willis wall today, like, yeah, he caught one ball. Nothing really jumped out to me. That was like, that would really point the arrow up, up, but I'm not going to ar- argue against it. Cause I am a Braden Willis guy. He also made a tackle on special teams. That's big. And Latu had a holding call had on a one penalty, of Jameson's yeah. nice returns. Mm-hmm. Latu not only dropping balls, but he's holding on the return. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Latu Bra- just it ever it seems like whenever his name gets mentioned, it's it's not a good thing. Like the drop, the fumble, or he didn't drop one today, but he fumbled it and the penalty. Braden Willis, I only have him down for one catch that I saw, but uh, I'll, I didn't see him in the run game. But I'll believe you because I know he is a good run blocker. Jason Poe stocked down. I mean, the the, the Niners' offensive line gave up sacks. They gave up pressure in the face of the quarterback in the interior. They didn't open run lanes for their backs. I don't think you can have anybody on that offensive line with a stock up today, and that includes Poe. Yeah. Yeah. Right? 100%. Yeah. Cleveland Farrell was definitely stock up. Definitely stock up for Cleveland Farrell. Definitely. In fact, to me, um, I was worried about Cleveland Farrell guys because I haven't I've watched every practice and I don't I watch some of the D line drills I don't see him necessarily winning in the one on ones he doesn't seem like he's real dynamic off the edge but you know what that guy's a ball player and he knows how to play and that that one thing about Farrell is he does know how to play so if you're going to give up the inside move to him I mean the thing about it is. I think that the the game plan as an offensive tackle is real simple. Be real strong inside and make him run that make him run the loop. You know, make him beat you to the edge and flatten to the quarterback cuz he doesn't have great speed. But if if he's going to set you up like he set up the Raider offensive lineman today and he's going to knife back inside, you're 10 times stupid if you let him do it because he cannot get to the quarterback with any consistency if you make him go wide. So if yeah. you get if you lunge wide and give him a, a counter back inside, it's the only way to get beat. And today the Raider lineman got beat that way. Now he's a little bit of a technician. He's very strong with his hands. I like I like what he does against the run. Um but today we saw you know him get to the quarterback. Saw so Cleveland Farrell stock up today. Yeah. I think that's a great point. He because he went outside and then swam inside. And then he got right to the quarterback, and he definitely is faster inside than he is going around the edge. So it's a good point. Um, Jalen Graham. Jalen Graham's the biggest stock up as far as I'm concerned. Jalen Graham was flying all over the field. He's wearing the green dot. He looks explosive. Um, I love this kid two years ago at Purdue. I thought he was coming out in the draft two years ago. Then he went back for his senior year, and then somehow he fell to the seventh round. My God, Jalen Graham is fast and physical, and oh man, to me, Jalen Graham is a starter. He is a starter. Um, that was a phenomenal pick, and and give Scott McLuhan, you know, told uh, Barrows and Lombardi in the in the Athletic when he was reviewing the draft, he said he really loved Jalen Graham. Now he also said he loved Cameron Latou, but he did mm-hmm. say that his favorite player in the draft was Jalen Graham. A couple of years ago, they interviewed. Uh, uh, Scott, and he said his favorite guy was um, Talanoa Hafanga. So you know what? A guy like McLuhan, if I was the Niners, I think I might put him on salary. You know, it's nice that they have Frank Gore in the front office, but I think I might pay McLuhan, um, you know, 500 k and just say, hey, why don't you consult for us? You know, uh, Jed loves them, and, you know, he's he's got a connection to the Niners, and he built their team that went to the Super Bowl with uh, Harbaugh. Uh, if I were the Niners, I would get Scott McLuhan on a retainer because he's got a great eye for talent. He absolutely does. And he loved Graham, and Graham was awesome today. Yeah, 
Jalen Graham was flying around. He was phenomenal in the run game. I'm going to say it again, though. I want him to get a little better in pass pro. I thought the linebackers really struggled in in pass coverage because they were getting sucked up by the play action. So Graham, yeah, he was flying around making plays. It, and it just makes me appreciate Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. I mean, Fred Warner, he is the best coverage linebacker in the NFL. Like when he drops into coverage and uh, in that Cowboys playoff game, he's running seam routes stride for stride for stride with CD lamb. So, you know, that that's a rare ability. So watching this game and how the Raiders kind of exploited the middle of the field off of play action kind of makes me appreciate those two starters that the Niners have, but yeah, Graham stock up, but hey, in pass coverage, locate those players running the over routes because today I thought it was a little too easy with the pitch and catch. Yeah, I like the, one thing I like I'll, the stock up, stock down. Said Kev, what, what do you think? Uh, on, uh, on yeah, Graham? one thing about Graham, I didn't really know much about him when he got drafted. Saw his highlights, looked pretty good. Johnny Johnny Holland spoke pretty highly of him. Um, I would I would suggest everyone to read Matt Barrow's pro, uh, profile on him on the Athletic. He did a really good profile on him, interviewed his high school coach and his college coach. Pretty interesting article. Um, he compared him to like a Fred Warner type almost because he thinks that he can he can have that Mike linebacker position on lock and uh, just have and be good in pass pro. I know, Ball, you said he didn't do that well today. Um, I don't remember specifically what he did today, but um, he supposedly is pretty good at it. So we'll see. Yeah. Big, the big winner today, Purdue football. Aiden yeah, O'Connell for the Raiders, Jalen Graham for the Niners. Um, how about Jair Brown, guys? Stock up, huh? Stock up for Jair. Flying around, flying around today. I, I He didn't make any one specific play that I was like, wow. But he did make some plays on special teams, making some tackles and in, in the back – or not in the backfield, but uh, in the secondary. Yeah. He, he was in the right spot, you know, if uh, the running back got an angle, Jair Brown was there to meet him. So I don't think he played a ton. But, yeah, I saw him out there making an impact early in the game. Deshaun Jameson, I got to go stock up. Not only did this guy – not only has this guy been an outstanding corner, I've been saying it all camp. I said, you know, know, the, the, the Niner fans who have been talking up this guy, the Niner players that have been talking up this guy, I go, they haven't really seen what he's really, really good at. He's a dynamic return guy. And, you know, you know, I asked uh, Brian Schneider about it, and I said, hey, well, give me your thoughts on Jamison and, and Bell as a returner. And he kind of went off on Bell saying, oh, Bell's very sure-handed and this and that. Um, but Jamison showed uh, the patience of a 10-year veteran on the returns today. He had one that was, you know, sometimes you don't patience is a bad thing. Sometimes it's good to just get up the field, man, make the first guy miss and go from there. But patience can be a good thing if you do it at the right time and demonstrate it at the right time. I think Jamison showed that he is not just a corner. He is a returner of substance and of significance. I thought the arrow was way up on Deshaun. Yeah, yeah, the I return mean, skill was dynamic. You know, we unfortunately a couple of them got called back due to holding calls. But yeah, Jamison, I thought he was exceptional. He was decisive in the return game. You know, Ronnie Bell was, you know, he was decent. He he, he got the job done. He didn't turn it over in the return game. But Jamison made you say, "Whoa, <laughs> this guy's got some talent back there." Yeah, and and it makes a difference too. I mean, the 49ers didn't get to really, you know take advantage from it because they had uh, penalties on everyone. But, you know, he ran it to the 40 yard line on his first return just easily. And he, and he, he has great timing. He hits the hole. He's fast. I mean, just also seeing him go for seeing the Niners go from Ronnie bell to Jameson. It got, gave you a really good, you know, comparison and be like, Oh, this guy's legit. You know, like this guy, this, the step up here is, is legitimate. So. Ambry Thomas. Go ahead. You guys can go first. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the fourth down tackle for loss, it was fourth and one. And Ambry just flew in off the left side, threw the running back to the ground, tackle for loss, 
you know, Niners ball. I was really impressed by that because the one thing we know about the 49ers defense and the one thing I like to talk about a lot on my channel, shout out Bay Area Baller 18, but is the 49ers defensive backs all tackle. Like it is a prerequisite. You got to be able to tackle if you're going to play in the secondary. I mean, Mooney tackles, Diamador Lenore, you know, Jimmy Ward was in the slot. He tackles. So I was glad to see Ambry Thomas fly in for the tackle for loss on fourth down. Then I know he had a nice pass breakup with some sticky coverage. So, yeah, I haven't been the biggest Ambry Thomas guy. But, I mean, after today's game, I got to give him – give the man his flowers because he played great today. Yeah. Um, I would like to see him get challenged a bit more in the pass game. I don't remember that many – He, ha I know he had a few good pass – protections but um i think that was kind of his weakness right it was more of the pass game prior yeah it was always like yeah you know he was right there but white receivers would just catch the ball on him you know he, he yeah. wouldn't get his head flipped around so that's something yeah. i'm watching when it comes to ambry thomas I, I mean to me i mean i just love the depth at the corner i mean it's just amazing when you really think about what the, where the niners have been. I mean, it's tough to get corner depth. And look at the Niners right now. You got Mooney Ward. You got Demo Lenore, Isaiah Oliver, Samuel Womack, Darrell Luters on the PUP, but the guy's a player. Just trust me when I say so. Deshaun Jamison, who I guaranteed a month ago was going to make the roster. Ambry Thomas, seven. Quantrez Knight, eight. I thought Taylor Hawkins played well in the secondary today. Um, I mean, the Niners, ha and he's a was a corner for years at San Diego State. He's probably a safety now. But, I mean, the Niners have quality depth at the corner. And, man, you can never have enough good corners. The old coach used to say the key to pass coverage is pass coverage. In other words, there is no key to pass coverage. you got to have dudes. And they have guys. Look what a couple years ago when they ran out of corners and they signed Brian Allen on a Wednesday to play against the Niners and the, play for the Niners against the Dolphins on Sunday. What happened? Fitzpatrick literally came out of the huddle pointing wherever Brian Allen was. Oh, Brian Allen's over there, guys. And then yeah. they would just throw right at him. Oh, Brian Allen's over there, guys. Oh, we're going to throw over there. I mean, when you have deficiencies at corner, it's like, uh-oh, you're screwed. And for the Niners to have a third round pick talented athletic young corner in Ambry Thomas who it looks like he's going to be much better this year combine that with Jameson and the young guys they have back there I love it I absolutely love it it's one of the one of the brightest spots of the day was Ambry Thomas um the rest of the defense what would you say? I thought Marcelino McCrary Ball had a really good game. I thought Marlon Davidson had a really good game. Um, the defense after that, mm, not so much. What did you guys think of the defense? Um, the defensive line was pretty mid, I'd say. Uh, there wasn't a ton of plays made. Farrell, I mean, that's on the list. I mean, I think he's talking about everyone else. I mean, I personally thought Womack had a decent day. Um, and I'm trying to think who else we're missing. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Who I mean, the defense it? wasn't good, in my opinion. It was a it was a vanilla performance. The Raiders dominated the trenches, so that tells you the D line. You know, Farrell was kind of the, the lone bright spot. I know uh, Krug liked Davidson's performance. You know, I, and I know Kinlaw was out of position a couple times, but I did see him kind of pushing the pocket and getting some penetration with. You know, my expectations for Kinlaw fellas are really low. Like that way, anything he does give us is gravy. So I was happy to see him be able to kind of push the pocket and kind of make the quarterback uncomfortable at least a couple times. Uh, that being said, he was out of position a couple times and the Raiders were kind of dominating the trenches and running it right up the gut to start the game. Jake Moody. I mean, you have yeah, to stop down. down. Yeah, yeah. miss yeah. to miss two field goals, forty and fifty-eight. Yeah. There's no it's not worth uh, panicking about, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like you know, that's just as simple as that. Um, I like that. I like that. We'll do that. We'll do that every week. Stock up, stock down. All right, 